it's quite an amazing sight. Um, but not when you've got a scorecard in your hand and you're yeah. playing for your livelihood. <laughs> Hey Soph, how's it going? Hey Rory, yeah, it's good, thank you. Um, finally, we've got a bit of sunshine up north. I've played a round of golf yesterday. I've been that busy for two weeks. I haven't played golf, which is a lot for me. A lot for yeah, me. well, you, you mentioned sunshine, and that's pretty perfect because today we're going to be talking about the Costa del Sol in Spain. Um, right. Obviously, one of the most convenient travel destinations for golfers from the UK, like less than three hour flight time, like incredibly good weather pretty much all year round. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how many golf courses are there in that uh, province of Andalusia, but I mean, I'm guessing there must be between 30 to 40 to 50 courses in this tiny little pocket of land. So, lots. Yeah. And obviously, you've got a fair amount of experience there. I've got a fair amount of experience there. We haven't played together there yet, unfortunately. Hopefully, that's something we can do in the future. But where did life for you start in the Costa del Sol in terms of golf? Let's think about it. Yeah, as an amateur, I went to uh, Sota Grande. There was a, an event called the Sherry Cup, which was played kind of springtime. So it was that amazing feeling of getting off the aeroplane and thinking, oh, it's nice and warm. <laughs> and you can actually play in a T-shirt when you've just had six months of shock in UK weather. <laughs> so we, we would go to Sota Grande as a team, um, England golf, the men's and the women's team uh, and, and, and play down there. And I just remember thinking, what a beautiful golf club and really nice, like members club, nice atmosphere there. Um, and it was great to be on the driving range with the lads because we, we didn't have that much um, back when I was an amateur, the men and the women. Fortunately, I, I lost in a playoff. I played really nicely um, and got into a playoff against, I think it was a German girl, and I don't know if it was the first or the second hole, it was a par five, and I hit a nice tee shot, you know, you know me, straight down the middle. And she hit one, I thought, oh, that's quite good, and she hit a five wood onto the green, straight into the middle of the green, and, and I couldn't reach it, and it was kind of like game over. Yeah. So that that a, was a bit of fight. <laughs> yeah, but there's been some like really good names on that trophy. Um, I played in it like when Rory McElroy played in it. I, I remember the year Rory played in it and a, a guy caddied for him. And we were talking about this par three, how hard it was playing. It was really into the wind, strong wind from the coast. And every other player was kind of hitting a wood or a long iron. And Rory said, oh, six iron, please. And the local caddy, you know, you're supposed to just keep up, shut up. And the local mm -hmm. caddy was like, Rory, I'm quite strong into the wind. <laughs> and he was just, I mean, he was only maybe 14. And he was just like, no, no, six iron. And then he hit it on the green and it was, Throughout the clubhouse, everybody was like, this Rory McIlroy lad hit six iron into that par three. <laughs> and that's when you suddenly thought, hmm, I wonder if we'll see his name again. <laughs> um, so you mentioned Sota Grande. I mean, that's a pretty... People who don't know much about Costa del Sol, basically, I think Sota Grande is where lots of the very best of the Costa del Sol is on offer. So I've never played at Sota Grande Golf Club. I, you say it's incredible. I've heard lots of other people say the same mm -hmm. thing. Um my experience of that area would be places like uh, Almanara, which is a bit of a, like a resort setup. Then you've got like La Reserva, which is one of my favourite courses in Spain. Have you ever played La Reserva? I've been for a drink on the terrace. <laughs> okay, well, it's a lovely clubhouse <laughs> as well. This, to be fair, is it's what we need to do in Spain, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. Play golf. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, you get, if you're able to get there one day for a round of golf, it's, it's an incredible golf course as well. It's kind of very testing off the back tees, but... A, a bit more fair than another one um, which I played out there Thinker Cortison which you'd I've love played, it yeah it's tight <laughs> it's just it's not really tight like there's plenty of space like the fairways are fairly big but if you do yeah. miss them <laughs> it's like sayonara golf ball goodbye and you're reloading so you'd be, you'd be is that where the Solheim there. Cup is then yeah you said that's going to be Solheim Cup in yeah, 2023 yeah. is that correct yeah I don't think I've played it but um, yeah the Solheim Cup's going to be there in 2023 so We've had lots of um, press releases around it. But yeah, it's a significant thing, I think, for um, Spain to get to get a Solheim Cup. If you think in the Ryder Cup of all, all the great Spanish players when it went to Valderrama, it was amazing. And it's very similar in the Solheim Cup, how you've got Azahar Munoz, which is actually from the Malaga area. Mm. Um, in fact, she's a Costa del Sol girl. Carlotta's a gander. Um, so hopefully they'll kind of get in the team and... 
well, yeah, us, us Brits, I'm sure, will go down there to support it as well as the locals. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you mentioned the Ryder Cup down there. I think it's fair to say that 97 at Valderrama is probably one of the more iconic Ryder Cups in, in recent memory. Um, so hopefully if the Solheim Cup can be anywhere near as good as that, it'll be a fantastic yeah. event. Have um, you played Valderrama? No, you name dropped that because I'm pretty sure you've played it and I've not I've oh. not been able to get there yet. How's Valderrama then? Come on, Sophie, lay it on me. <laughs> yeah, we were staying at San Roque, so we played a couple of times there. Um, we were on a bit of a corporate bash. It wasn't a, a tournament. And uh, yeah, down to play Valderrama. I mean, that course suits me down to the ground. It's really tight. There were so many memories from the Ryder Cup. Um, the par three, oh, I want to say, is it 15? I had to hit driver because <laughs> it was so long. And then stood on 17 and we played it off the correct tee because I was like, I really want to go for 17. Like, that's what I remember uh, the Ryder Cup when I did. I hit it just through the back of 17. And, and got up and down for my four. So oh, absolutely loved it. Would it, You know, when people say, oh, it's one of your best courses you've ever played, it's still right up there. I normally, I rank a course if I played it in a tournament because I can get yeah. a feel for it. But um, yeah, I didn't play in a tournament and still had it well up there. Yeah, well, I'm very jealous that you've played there. And it, it's unusual. Like I don't really have that good a mental picture of what Valderrama is like, um, despite having obviously spoken to lots of people who played it. Um, the one thing that most people do say is just how difficult it is. How, I mean, explain the challenge that is on offer at Valderrama and why it's just going to, if for people who love a challenge, because there are golfers out there who do love to beat themselves up a bit, what, what are they expecting when they get to Valderrama? I don't know if they're called cork trees. That, that, mm -hmm. the, I think they're they are, quite yeah. short trees. The short, so it's not like the, the tall trees, but they're quite short. And it's one of those things that, you know, when you think, oh, I'll just hit the fairway. No, no, I don't know what that right. feels like at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, right. So you stand on the tee and you're grateful if it hits the fairway. Do you right. know what I mean? Oh, I'm yeah. grateful it's hit the fairway. But at Valderrama, it, you can hit the fairway and still have an overhanging tree in the way and you right. still have to shape it. <clears throat> so you've got to stand on the tee and think, where does my tee shot need to be? So you, you are literally plotting your yeah. way around, which is why that, that's kind of my golf game. But, um, yeah, it's always just in mint condition. You know, when you go to the driving range and they've got the pyramids, like yep. pyramid golf balls, and you just knock that top one off. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the condition of it, but the, the, the difficulty is just you, you never seem to have, you know, when people go, I just want to hit it straight. You don't want to hit a straight ball of other armor. You forever need to curl it because yeah. there'll be bunkers or there'll be trees and yeah, I like it because, I mean, imagine what Seve was like around it. He must yeah. have loved it. Like that feeling of creating shots rather than just playing golf swings. It's the epitome of Spanish golf, in my opinion. But it is hard and you just you just have to embrace the difficultness of it, I suppose. Yeah, the way you say, even if you hit it in the fairway, you can still have trees in the way kind of reminds me of, I played Harbour Town in South Carolina and that was very similar. It was, I would hit a tee shot which kind of like left half or right half of the fairway. And for me, I'd be like, yes, well done, Rose, in play. Yeah. And then I get there and think, oh, ah, green's there. And there's a tree overhanging this. What's going on? Um, but yeah, it sounds like Valderrama is just the ultimate test of <clears throat> shot shaping, target golf, and then obviously on and around the greens. Where I think they've got crushed marbles in the, in the bunker, which gives you an idea of how luxury we're talking oh, at yeah. Valderrama. Um, I mean, I'm guessing the greens are pretty slick and, and slopey as well. Yeah, just it's just a championship golf course. Um, the the greens are and then the, like there's quite nice views. You have kind of raised tee shots as well, and um, I mean it's not like you see the sea too much, but you just always feel like you're on your own hole. You don't mm -hmm. feel like that you're on eighteen holes. You've got your own individual hole. Um, but yeah, very high quality golf course. Yeah, so if you um, can play it, do play it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that's kind of the the uh, Sotte Grande era in a nutshell. We've mentioned Sotte Grande itself, uh, where life in the Costa del Sol started for you. You mentioned you played San Roque as well. Um, I understand mm -hmm. that's pretty incredible. Uh, yeah. Valderrama, La Reserva, all these amazing names, and so they would be at the the kind of top end of the price point for anyone visiting from the UK. But certainly worth checking out if you have that uh, sort of budget. But um, talking about where life started for you in the Costa del Sol as an amateur. Uh, I mean, you also have a pretty significant moment as a pro there as well, don't you? Yeah, I do. I got my tour card in Spain. It was uh, around La Cala. So I think a lot of people might have played La Cala or at least um, 
yeah, visited I've been there a few and, times. And weddings, golf courses. Yeah. Rory, imagine walking that. <laughs> no, imagine I won't. walking that, exactly, <laughs> for five rounds in a tournament and two or three practice rounds. Ouch. So, so anyone, anyone yeah. not getting the context, if you're going to book a holiday at La Cala, make sure you're getting buggies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind of it's off the coast isn't it it's up it's up in the yeah, hills in the hills um, of Mijas, yeah exactly so my friend cadded for me and if first thing so if we want a tour bag what i said oh, i've been to la cala like <laughs> lots of truth. i know where i've looked at it you, you, it's not about a tour bag he goes no no i've been doing, doing, doing it properly well we got this tour bag <laughs> big big pink tour bag uh yeah it wasn't wasn't chuffed at all um, I think they've changed a few of the, the courses, hasn't it? Is it now Asia, Europe? America, yeah. <clears throat> America, yeah. Um, I can't quite remember what it was when I played it, but the um, there was a short par three straight down a hill. I think that was playing my 16th hole. Um, and then uh, 18 came back to the clubhouse. And then the other side, I think we played more of the Asia hole uh, courses where... You had to hit over ravines uh, and stuff like that, but it was, was quite—it was quite a hard place to do Q school. So, for those of you that don't know, it's qualifying school is where you go to gain your playing rights on tour. So, wherever you finish in that tournament at the end of the year defines where you can play the following year. So, the aim on the Ladies European Tour is to, to kind of get in the top twenty-five, and then you can get some playing rights. So, yeah, I, I went over there with my mate and um, my mum came as well. Funnily enough, she didn't walk much of it because I think she saw it and was like, <laughs> I'm sat, not supporting you. <laughs> yeah, sat I'll by sit the pool. in the clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just quite a daunting golf course because of the um, the visuals. So this par three, it was 16. You're so high up and you're hitting so far down that you can't get a perception of it. So... The, the ball leaves the club and you're looking up thinking you don't actually know until it until it lands it's it's quite an amazing sight um but not when you've got a scorecard in your hand and you're yeah. playing for your livelihood <laughs> um and I just remember coming down 18 I was doing well I had a good week I did get my tour card I think I finished maybe six six seven something like that and I, it was a par five and I got close to the green in two. I kind of hit this three wood, last three wood of the whole week. And they just sigh of relief. I know it was Q school, but the, the course is, is, is a great course, but it's tricky. I mean, to go over like on the Asia course, you go from a T over a ravine. Then you go zigzag back over a ravine. Y- your heart is in your mouth constantly. Um, so... Yeah, I would kind of like to go back there with a golf cart, with a few mates, a few drinks and enjoy it. And leave the Um, scorecard in the clubhouse. (laughs) Yeah, it was stressful. So it's really funny when anyone says, oh, I'm going to play La Cala. I always think back to my friends saying, I want a tour bag. bag." (laughs) So you're talking about uh, LET Q School. What's the setup there? I mean, do you play all three courses? How many rounds do you play? It's it's quite intense. I know the European Tour one's quite intense. Is LET fairly similar? So when we played, it was two courses, which is what, I mean, this was 13, 14 years ago, two courses. So you had two practice rounds and then you kind of alternated on the courses for four rounds. And then I think the fifth round was on the one that kind of the par five that comes back down to the the clubhouse. Good week, long week. But it's absolutely spectacular up in the hills of Mijas. Yeah, and I would recommend it as well, just to go and stay. You can do, you can just stay in the hotel. So everything is on on site so if I was doing La Cala I'd, I'd look to kind of stay up there because trust me you don't get out of second gear going up that hill yeah. the, uh, hotel and golf course yeah I mean there aren't there aren't many resorts in Europe I guess let alone uh, Spain that can offer accommodation on site three absolutely top class 18 hole golf courses lots of other stuff to do and see there as well so yeah I mean anyone looking for a long weekend in the sun and some slopey golf courses, <laughs> which are incredibly good fun to play than La Cala's ones go for. But um, so we're talking about you're obviously on the LET now. Uh, mm-hmm. We're back in 2007. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, which other golf courses have you have you played out there? Which courses do the does the core to, does the tour we, sorry visit in Costa del Sol? We um, we've done La Quinta, um, Los Flamingos, I think it was, um, Aloha, Guadamina. 
all, all kind of that little bit round Marbella and Port Venus, which oh, was okay. great. <laughs> it was like a bit of golf, and then get down the harbour. Fair enough. So you would book a couple of days off uh, after your tournament's finished yeah, to enjoy a always, bit. Always, of... <laughs> always fly home on a Tuesday from the Spanish Open. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, you mentioned is the it, Is it Sinatra? Sinatra's down uh, Marbella. We would, um, and then there's one. No, Port Banu, Sinatra's, and then at the far end there was this boat, and you could like, yeah, it's great. So if you, I, I wouldn't know anything about that. When I've been to Spain to film, I've been just consummate professional, tucked up in bed by <laughs> seven thirty at night. I've never been for a drink in Port Banu or Marbella. <laughs> <laughs> <Whoop. laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you mentioned La Quinta. I guess part of my experience of uh, the Costa del Sol was quite a funny one. Um, I'm guessing you might have seen some of these videos, but years ago we went with uh, Crossfield and Lockie and Oliver who you obviously went to university with and know through your golf yeah. travel and we went on a mental tour of Andalusia in general but obviously took in as much of Costa del Sol as we could find but we did in f- and you've done filming trips as well you know they can be fairly like they're good fun but they can be fairly intense long hours kind of mm-hmm. bit of a slog we did 19 golf courses in five days I remember <laughs> hearing about this yeah but I and it was like you were literally going and playing kind of six holes and racing to was, another one. Yeah, yeah, six holes was good. Like some sometimes we went and popped pop, pop, the popped in, played one hole, and then left. So the the concept was to make up an eighteen hole course vlog out of one hole from each different golf course mm-hmm. in Andalusia. So um, thankfully, since then I've been back and played eighteen holes at some of the courses we played, including including those at the Costa del Sol. So that's kind of my experience of the Costa del Sol. And what's Not your favourite then? What's your favourite that you've gone well, what, or which of the one that you played and you thought, I oh, would actually like to play more than one hole here? Well, look, yeah, La Reserva. We played, I think, about six or seven on that one. So that's one of the more extensive uh, courses we did on that tour. But yeah, I, I'd love to go back and play 18 there. It's like you said, the clubhouse is just a gorgeous place to sit in the sun, have a bit of lunch. The food's incredible. A couple of drinks. Pyramids of golf balls there on the driving range, obviously a hallmark of any top class golf course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the course there was immaculate, pretty, challenging, but not too tough. Like you could go a little bit offline, which for me is great. Um, so that would be my favourite golf course in the Costa del Sol. Do you have a favourite as well? I mean, you've played some lots of pretty good ones, but. Valderrama, I'm guessing. Yeah, but I didn't earn any money at Valderrama. <laughs> a lower, a lower I earned some cash in okay. the uh, Spanish Open. So, yeah, that's I feel the story favorite. coming on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, a lower golf club. Um, just like it's literally just just off the coast. It's a great, great little golf course. And um, I played in the Spanish Open there. Played, played well. For, I remember turning up first round. And I was getting a really tough side of the draw all year. And I'm going to warm up. And my mate has just come like, she's just played. And she's had a decent knock. And uh, a caddy goes, wind's going up. So I was like, oh, okay. And literally it went, wind's up. I go, God, I've got another dodgy side of the draw. Um, come on, so don't be negative. I went out there and shot a good score. I think I was, well, I got interviewed at the end, which is always a good sign. So I must have been up there. <laughs> Um, so it was kind of like that's great I've done my good score in the afternoon when the wind's tough I'll come back in the morning and the, the wind will be down because that's what happens when you're by the coast doesn't it so shot another good score um, I think going into the final round I was second to last group out as I had a moon off the local girl it's <laughs> rather good round those golf courses Rory believe it or not shot because she, she <laughs> yeah she she was kind of in contention with the uh, Beth Allen and they were moving away from the field so I su- oh, we weren't playing for third, but it, it kind of got towards a point where I suppose we all were playing for third place. And um, we, were, like, we were on TV, cameras are there and everything. And um, we get down 18. So there's water on the left of 18 that are lower. So the, the, the tee shot's reasonably flat, water on the left, and then your second shot's up the hill. Tee shot's difficult because most women golfers, if our bad shot is left, um, so I negotiated that, kind of hit one down, kind of the right half, kind of fell it down there. And um, my caddy at the time gives it the old, oh, I've had such a great week, so really enjoyed it. Like it, like the deed was done, do you know what I mean? Like you've not gone in the water off the tee, it's fine. <laughs> and I was really trying to stay in the moment. And I'm like, Adam, Adam, like 
we still got another shot to hit. Like, we've still got another putt, potentially, like, two putts. Like, we need to get on it. And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, get on it. Uh, he wasn't a professional caddy, everybody. He was a carpet fitter. He was just one of my friends. Uh, so we're like, get on it, get on it, right? So he's then suddenly going, right, just trust it. Done all this, like, trying to get me back into the zone. So I've got 100 and, I think it was 37 yards up the hill. But it's at least a club up the hill. You can't yeah. see the flag. So I've stood there, I think of it, seven iron. It's just gone straight at it. Cameras are on. I'm like, right, I never hold my pose, Rory. I'm always like, oh, there you go. I thought I'd hold my pose. And then there was, oh, I remember when you used to be able to have crowds. There was a crowd at the back. And uh, you hear this, like, kind of, and then you hear this, woo, woo, woo. And I was like, oh. And then it kind of filters back down. And the cameraman will whisper to you, it's gone in. And it's like the relief of, oh, my God, like, it's my final hole 72 holes it's tough when you're out like in the final groups and you're always on television it gets quite mentally tiring as well and it went in and I was just like oh my god like to hit that shot when you really really wanted it at that moment and it when it went in and I was just like so and, and then it's great because we don't now it's on tv a lot but maybe three four years ago it wasn't on tv as much but to have it live on television so my parents and family back home could watch it. I had a guy that was walking around me who had a bet on me. And he was like, he had the loudest cheer going. And then for even me to have it, like, so now I, I don't need to remember it. Well, I always will remember it. But visually, because I didn't see it go in the hole, I've now got the video for it. So that was such a nice way to kind of sign off. Um, so, yeah, that was good. So if anyone does play a lower golf club, I eagle the last. Yeah. There should be a little the plaque in the fairway, place. right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All these Severiano Ballesteros plaques. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, that, that I guess is the polar opposite of um, my golf being filmed and broadcast to people is that uh, you get a nice memory of binning a seven iron to finish third in an LET T Tour event, but I just have to relive me duffing it a foot across the floor <laughs> or hitting a wedge 200 yards, six feet off the floor and through the back of the green, but... Yeah, I mean, that's a yeah, great... But the thing is, on the LET uh, or in general uh, on TV, if you're doing bad stuff, you're never shown. So that's, true. that's what you need to remember. They <laughs> Only they show the good stuff because that's when you're playing well. But yeah, I mean, that's a great memory to finish up. Was that one of your most recent experiences in the Costel side, I guess? Yeah, it was. I went back last year. Um, we uh, doing some commentary for Sky. Um, we went back there and they now do on, on the tour. It's, it's a race to the Costa del Sol. So that's pretty cool because um, the LET didn't have that. LPGA has it, PGA Tour, European mm -hmm. Tour. But but now the, the Ladies European has that. And I think that's quite significant to finish a season properly. Um, so we go back there um, kind of end of end of October, beginning of November. Um and I, we can't thank the Costa del Sol enough for that, really, for just giving the players something to carry on playing for and winning the order of merit and the significance of that. Excellent. So I'll finish up with just, uh, you've obviously played lots of the best courses out there and lots of really nice courses on your life on tour as well. What's the one course you is on your list next time you go back to the Costa del Sol? I think I can guess what it is, considering I'm guessing you might be heading there with Sky at some point in the future. <laughs> Yes, yes, I think I will be. So uh, Finca is, Finca is, Cortesin, is on the list. Yeah, yeah It's 2023, which seems so far away, but but it's really not, is it? So um, yeah, time pretty much flies. once we get once we get this Solheim Cup over in, in September, um, yeah, we'll be we'll be looking to that. Oh, I mean, if it's anything like Glen Eagles, can you imagine? Like this is what I'm looking forward to. Glen Eagles freezing, absolutely freezing. I'm just looking forward to like going to Spain and just wearing a t-shirt, yeah. sunglasses on and not freezing because Solheim Cup is th like basically 36 holes, isn't it? Two rounds a day. Yeah. So those morning, I can't imagine how cold it was at Glen Eagles for those morning four balls or foursomes, those first tee shots. But down in the Costa del Sol in September, I mean, it might be a fin jumper and you'll take yeah, it I mean, off at worst. nine o'clock, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean September 2023, book a trip to Costel Sol, go and watch Solan Cup and then book a few tables down at Puerto Banus and go and hang out with the players after Europe have won. <laughs> Sounds good. 
So, in fact, I quite fancy this trip. Where do I book? <laughs> oh, well, I, I happen to know a company that might be able to help oh, right. you out yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, good to chat to you. Um, like we said on the last call we had, hopefully we'll get out on the golf course soon. And um, maybe you never know, we might end up playing golf in the Costa del Sol and I can show you how to lose golf balls at Finca Cortison one day. Well, I mean, you're very good at showing me that. So it doesn't matter <laughs> what course we play. All right, cheers, Soph. Cheers. <laughs>